Greetings, fellow friends, humans, and alike. Welcome to a new uh, unboxing haul I have. Ignore my beautiful goddamn table because it is not uh, cleaned up at all. You see, there was a sale. I don't know why I'm screaming. There was a sale. And I did buy stuff. Like always, brushes. This one. Uh, gas decker synthetic. Fine tip. Lovely. Useful. Then, gas yes, sticker, also fine tip, really useful for miniatures, I think. I was uh, searching for miniature painting brushes, so I have to say now that uh, August is around the corner, yes I know this is, there may be a video that is not going out before August, I do not know who that is. Intense. We will see. That one came without the cover. It is still not bad. To say that is an amazing one. So, more miniature brushes. And this one. Professional watercolor. Synthetic Sable. I never bought a synthetic sable before. By the way, that's a Del Roni. And those two others. Astogastica. Then I bought this one. Ooh. Together with this one. Those are super granulating colors. Which are extremely expensive. Also, what the heck? Okay. Oh, they are really cute. We will swatch them later. Right now... This thing costs 6 euros. This together 60, I think. Yes. It's a good combination of colors, if you ask me. I love the muted ones. This is a beautiful uh, green blue. But. There's also something you will never see again. This is a Fordham Aquarel Random Grey Special Edition. This is the color of this year. Which is made by mixing every pigment that is left over. This is the color of the year. It's not granulating, but it's a bigger one. Look at this tiny little cute swatch. We will swatch that as well. I am so looking forward to this. Then, this one. I'm about to put this on. <laughs> this is a normal tiny A6. This is A6 dimensions if you're interested. Fourteen point five and ten point five. This is, by the way, a free sticker that came with my Yeti order from the Yeti with my Ooblitz order. 
and I am not able to separate those two. This is a new sketchbook for me. I have enough sketchbooks, but I also wanted to try out more of using these ones. So I bought a tiny sketchbook I can put into my bag and take with me. But that's not all! I do now own Number 443 out of 550 of one of the most expensive aquarelle brushes I own. Do not ask me what this is about. Do not ask me how much that costs. You can do that and search for prices. $16.92. Okay, that is not the most expensive. Okay, brush I own, I think. If you found this on the uh, retinas part of the hair or whatever but this is a beautiful um how you call that synthetic scroll hair yes i am on search for synthetic hair brushes because I do not want to buy real real um, real hair brushes oh 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 interesting wait Okay, I own one fake um, brush that is uh, a bit creepy held together by whatever, I do not know. It's also synthetic. But I think this is a bit better than a test. So, yeah, they're more stiff. They're still holding a bit of the... No, this is far better. Holy shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I bought this because the only other watercolor brush I bought is this one. And that's fine line. I own a lot of brushes. I also own a lot of um, synthetic brushes. Also, if you remember in my last Gastico haul, I had this one. This is a square liner. Literally, you uh, make a square flat piece line, whatever with it. It holds a lot of water. I have so many brushes. But most, the thing is, most of my brushes I own, I also use for acrylics. I bought these for acrylics, but they're mostly meant also only for watercolor. Then... 
Oh, if I really do have so many brushes, that is insane. I don't know if you know that, but I do own a brush fish. That's my baby. And I think the space. Probably need to make a bigger one or throw some of my brushes I do not use. Basically, like this one. This is intense. This is an acrylic 0 0.0 brush that is stood like heck. Love it. That is a tiny one. I love tiny brushes. They are stupid. You can't work with them. I have my teaser ones that are still okay. Do not enjoy them a lot because the tip is bad. But they're good for normal paintings. Too <sighs> many brushes. This one I do not Oh. Um. That is a move of one. Good for everything. So yeah. Um, that's it I guess. We will do the swatching, definitely. Um, with the um, bolt ones. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is so good. I love those. Like, yeah, gorgeous. This one costs like one euro or something. Not oh, yeah. We will work with this. It even has a stamp number on it. Nice. So yes, this is everything. I should... Put everything out just as an example. What is this? Oh yeah, I know what that is. <sighs> Too many brushes, that is. And uh, let's get to the swatching part of them now. From, from, um, I, will, I will do that later. You will see it now. Right next.
So they dried. I'm not in my pan yet. Interestingly, they are really fascinating. But yes, they're finished. They're dried, and maybe you remember if you haven't watched. Um, don't worry, it's not that important. But maybe you remember the June box, the um, gouache part thing, the artful June box, right? Um, I talked about how uh, revetable colors like watercolor and gouache have this shiny um, part to it if you have too much pigment because of the binder. I don't know if it's the binder, but I think it's the binder. And you see it here also. This is something I really hated, but nowadays I enjoy the randomness. It has something interesting. So yes, they dried. They're really fascinating. I mean, it's not 100% as you see it on the pictures. Um, but to be fair, it's not off the um, forest blue has a slight grayish vibrant green undertone you see grey parts and really intense green parts they're not really 100% granulating but maybe that's my technique I don't know how they work um, it's just me experimenting Exper experiment experimenting oh my god then we have the um, volcano brown the volcano brown has a red tint on the picture there's a bit green which could be interesting sadly I don't really see it on my part but that could have different reasons maybe the uh, picture is a bit weird but yeah it's interesting. I will also say it's not really a brown, it's more grey. But an enjoyable grey. I think the brown part comes from the red um, spots. Then we have the volcano violet. Um, in the picture they have a pink pinkish and bluish spots. I do see a lot of blue down here. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can. But that's really it. The um, outer line here is a bit fascinating. I don't know if that is also the binder or whatever glittering out there, but it looks orange, yellow orange, like like the red one you see up there. It's a bit interesting. Also, I have to say, um, different papers have different uh, ways of reacting with colors. This is a basic tool. Uh, the GSM uh, compressed color pad I bought like years ago. It's cheap, 10 euros for a lot of paper. But if you enjoy different ways, you should always test the, those colors out before you paint with them because different papers make colors behave differently. Which will be fun if we try it out in this tiny book. I know this is 120 GSM if I remember correctly. So light washes should be okay. Um, we can talk about that later. So, the uh, red part. Um, to be fair, 
There wasn't really anything with the red part, or even on the internet pictures. But I love how they feather. That this the, the violet is really smooth, right? But the red is really feathery. I mean, those look like things. <laughs> But this is so fascinating. I don't know what it is, but it feels so weird to look at. Sadly, there is no underlying color as far as I see it, but in the end, it doesn't matter. I didn't buy them because of the granulation part, right? I hate granulating colors. I love just the color selection. That is weird, right? But I have... I found my love for muted colors. I don't know why. But And that isn't even muted. I mean, no, those two aren't muted. But they have this downright earthy muted feeling. Even though they aren't. How to explain. But maybe you know what I want to say. Or try to say. Yeah. So... Where did that come from? What the heck? I'm confused. What is, is it? Okay, let's go that one. So yes, also now the grey, right? From a picture, you, you also see it when it's on your kind of, I thought, well, that is a bit fascinating because I think this grey is a warm and a hot grey. A warm and a hot, I'm sorry. A warm and a cold grey in one piece. I've never seen something like this. But it turns out it is a cold grey. It's weird. And the picture, I mean, you see it also here, right? It has those brownish parts and it's also kind of granulating. Kind of. Not 100%, but it's fascinating. Also, something you probably can't pick up, but... The grey is glittering, like there's shiny parts in here. I know you can probably see that. Wait. Oh no, my frequency is off, so you see those pinky stripes? I think you can see that. It's really subtle, but there are tiny specks of something in there. Tiny, tiny specks. I love it. And I have to say, this is the weirdest grey I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the uh, massive cool undertone, right? Did you see that? But if you turn it like around with a more warm color, the warm color comes out. There is a brown and a blue in there. If you have this warm light I have with my boring IKEA lamp here, it's like it's, it's the sunlight bulb in there. You see more the brown parts, right? And now I go over here. That is my cool color lamp, which is like also day saving color LED bulb or something like that. But on the cool spectrum, you see the cool part. Is that normal or I'm just imagining things? Like, surely you can manipulate with the uh, color uh, aspect, but. That is insane, right? You kind of ignore the, the warm part, and now you ignore the cool part. They're like reflecting a bit, which is weird. Could be interesting, could be weird, but you, you see that, right? This part, this lower part is more warm. I mean, you basically, I don't know if you see that, but the, the, the outer rim is warm, the lower part is warm, and now you see starting to bleed in the more bluish parts, and up here it's more uh, cold, more blue. 
and then you have the mixed granulation part I, I don't know how you can say that but it's like stone I mean it's literally like stone can you see if I put it up here it's so weird that the camera doesn't pick up the glittering part it's so sad look at that that is not that is not solely the fault of my bulbs 100% not if that would be that way, this would be warm and this would be okay, maybe 100%. You, 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 but I don't know. Maybe it's it's on my bulbs, I don't know. But there still is a warm side and a cold side in this color. Also this glittering mess. I'm so sad you can't see that. This is... Wait, is this rubbing off on oh my... It is not. It is not rubbing off on my finger, so it is. It is not really mica, I presume. It is probably something from the from the. Mixed um, base elements, yeah, something shiny. I wish you could see this glittery. Oh, that is so satisfying. Oh, this is the most beautiful gray I've ever seen. Just as a comparison. I know I talk too much and I probably will shoo away every single one of you, but I can't. This is my, oh excuse me, this is my grey, uh, my Schminke, uh, Schminke, Corodam Aquel, the basic paint set, basic, it was on sale. Um, this is my grey, right? This is a basic, boring grey. It, it's not really grey because it's black, but if you dilute down black, it's getting grey. That's, that's like it is. There is nothing glittering. There is no colour shift. There's just a boring one pigment colour. And you see that, right? That is one pigment, PBK6. And even if you look at the mixture of three pigments, the PR101 and PBK7, PB29, even if you try to look at it, it's still... It has some subtle color shifts, kind of, but it's not intense. It's just a boring old gray. And this is nothing I've ever seen before. Also, I have my uh, artful set, uh, which is a bit more interesting because there were no um, pigment types in there. That is my strip I made. And the grey here. Holy shit! What did happen with my. Why is that so shiny? Do you see that? That is interesting. What happened there? What are you gonna start color? I don't know what color that is, to be honest. I think it's a dark violet. Holy shit, that intensity. So where's my gray? So here's the black, right? That is the white, that is the black. Simple, boring grayish undertone. Nothing special. One point, one, one, one pigment, right? That is so wild to me. 
I don't even know where, what I wanted to say, what my point was, besides the fact that this is the most insane grey I've ever seen. I do not own one colour, maybe besides those, right? I do not own one colour that is similar to that. I mean, even staring at my gouache, right? Uh, I didn't. Oh, I really didn't uh, melt them. Even looking at my everything I own, this is absolutely insane. Um, I think I should stop here because I do not know what I could say any more than what the actual heck did happen. I I will glue that in here. I maybe should just buy a new palette I don't know I'm absolutely absolutely in love with every single one of them they're extremely expensive if you do not live in Germany good luck I'm one set of six of those six five five excuse me five in a wooden box cost 63 euros now that the uh, euro is a bit low and uh, the dollar is high could be cheaper for you but i think with customs and import in general and the um you know sending stuff and so i would say only buy them if you're not in europe uh excluding britain i don't know how it's there right now uh, only if you really really love the colors I mean they're different sets right that's those this is not the only set that is just a special occasion set something to celebrate the super granulating colors like this one it's not limited but it's still I mean is it let me look yeah it's a sun it's a Sonder edition, a special edition. So it probably will sell out anyway extremely soon. Those cost 16 euro 19. This costs where is it? 9 euros 31. And this tiny thing alone. Cost six sixteen. The bigger pen pop pots, not pots, but those here, cost uh, nine to twelve, if I remember correctly. But I think I could forget what I saw, so I don't know. Yeah, all in all, for the whole thing, I paid a bit over sixty euros, and I'm absolutely happy. Ah, <laughs> maybe. I mean, I will still do some tippy toe sketches, but I will let those dry and try to reactivate them if there's any difference. So, excuse me. <coughs> so, we see. Excuse me. <coughs> if there are any differences, if they are dry. I mean, this thing is dry, but you know what I mean, if there is any difference. I still have to say this is the most beautiful green I've ever seen. So this video will go on for hours and I'm in fucking love. Also a, a little preview, I have an amazing idea that I will do with the gouache set. Oh, that is insane. I, I searched on YouTube to find out if there is anybody out there that tried that before. Nobody did. If this works, this is a game changer for so many things. But firstly, I have to tidy up this whole mess, do my sketchy scotchies, and then August starts and we have our ghost, which is going to be interesting. I could do August this year with the this set, but that is a bit expensive. <laughs> I think I will still do the crush. But uh, I don't want to talk anymore. That is that is too much input for you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If you are still here, uh, write down in the comment. Uh, uh,
cheese sausage. Do not ask me why. Just see cheese sausage. Thank you very much for watching and now I will go on to the next step. I don't think I don't think we will see us again. So uh, I say thank you for watching and hope you have an amazing day.